How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Arrow Team channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to convert our previous 1.5 to 1 scale Boeing 737-800 into the Boeing 737-900 or 900ER. The 737-900 is a stretched variant of the 737 Next Generation family, extending to about 10 feet longer than the 737-800. The 900ER, for extended range, is a newer iteration, possessing a greater operational range than the base 900, and most prominently features an extra pair of exit doors installed in the aft fuselage, allowing the maximum passenger capacity to increase from 189 to 220. The 900 first flew in 1997, and the 900ER was launched in 2006. Its higher density makes it a great option for more long-distance domestic flights, and it sees its service most widely through operators such as Alaska, Delta, and United. So, as for the build itself here, as I mentioned, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. If you are building an airport project in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Now, as for how this tutorial is going to work, this will be something new for us. As I mentioned, this is a conversion, so we're going to be starting from scratch, and I'll be showing you how to adapt the fuselage of our previous 737-800 tutorial to stretch it into the 900. Additionally, for our configurations, we of course have the 900ER here, and we also have the option to add in the blended winglets or the split scimitar winglets. It's also possible to leave them out entirely. Many of the older 900s were never retrofitted with winglets, so that is an option that is available. Now, if you followed along with it, you may recall that the 737-800 tutorial did include these as well, but our design for the winglets has changed and improved significantly in the months since then, so I will be showing you how to build this new design here instead of referencing the base tutorial for that part. Feel free to use this as a replacement for the 800 winglets as well, if you like. In fact, I encourage you to. Finally, at the end of the video, I'll be showing you how to add in the aft exit doors and convert this into a 900ER. In all likelihood, this is probably what you'll be doing. The ER is much more common than the 900, but those do still exist, of course, so that is an option as well if you like. So, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial. Alright, so here's some dimensions to help you figure out where you want to put this. Of course, the only dimensions that change are the length for this aircraft from the base tutorial. But just for fun, the length of the 737-900 here is 63 blocks long. The width is 53 blocks across with winglets, or 51 blocks across without and its total height is 19 blocks from the base of the landing gear to the tip of the vertical stabilizer. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. Now for this tutorial, for the sake of repetition, I am going to be again, of course, referencing the base 737-800 tutorial that was previously on our channel. You can find a link to this in the video description below, so please do go pull that up in advance. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going! Alright, so the first thing that we're going to be doing here before we get started on building any of the aircraft at all, is starting off a fuselage diagram for ourselves here. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is coming down to the floor here, and I already have this row of uh, gold blocks across just as a consequence of the tutorial world setup here, but we're going to be grabbing black wool and making a row of three across right here, and this is going to be where the nose wheel of the aircraft is going to land. This is just going to be a starter reference point for ourselves. The next thing that we're going to be doing is grabbing any temporary block. I'm going to be using lime concrete powder for this, and this is going to outline exactly where the fuselage itself is going to fall. So out to either side here, uh, going forwards from the outermost blocks of this row of three of the black wool, we're going to be placing three of these long, uh, lime concrete powders going forwards here. So that's one, two, and three. One, two, and three there. Then we're going to come in at an angle here and place two of these going forwards. This is going to be the very tip of the nose. Next, starting out to either side here of this row of three of the black wool, we're going to be placing a total of nine blocks of this going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. It should look exactly like this. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the next thing that we're going to be doing is grabbing a different temporary block. And with this block here, I'm going to be using the red concrete powder, we're just going to be making a line across right here. And this is the point that marks the first stretch in the fuselage here. So anything crossing over this from the base 737-800 tutorial is going to be extended further by two more blocks. So anything passing over this line marker here will be added onto by two blocks. 
and I'll explain this further in the uh, tutorial when I get to it, but um, this is just a marker that we're going to have for ourselves here to get started with. Now with this marker here, I'd also recommend perhaps bringing this up on the sides as well, so that it's very clearly visible for the higher layers up when you're further off the ground. I'm not going to be doing this myself, just for the sake of um, cleanliness, I suppose, with the uh, world here, but that is a technique I would recommend using as well. So, now that we have this first stretch mark in here with the fuselage, we're going to be coming down to in line with the fuselage outline again here, and extending this back by an additional seven blocks. So, starting right from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Next, we're going to be switching over to yet another temporary block here. I'm going to be using the orange concrete powder here for this, and this is going to be for the wing box outline. So this is going to go back for a total of 15 blocks, going back from both of these outlines here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Then we're just going to connect this across here with a row of three at the back and front, looking just like this. Once we have that 15 by 5 box outlined right there, we're going to be coming to the outer corners again here, and placing two of the fuselage outline blocks going back like so. And here is now where the stretch marker is going to go in for the aft fuselage. So we're going to grab the red concrete powder again here, and just drag this line all the way across like so. And this marker here, again, is going to mark a stretch of two blocks. So I'm just going to set this out here and anything crossing over this will get extended by an additional two blocks. Again, I'll extend this, or I'll uh, explain this further in the tutorial when we get to that part, but just make sure that you have that uh, set out for yourself and marked. So, now that we have the final stretch mark in place there, going back from this, we're going to switch over to our fuselage outline again here, and we're going to be adding another 12 blocks going back in line with this here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Next here is where we're going to start tapering off for the, uh, after the tail cone here. So we're going to be coming in now and placing five blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And finally, we're going to come into the center block and place four blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Perfect. That is the fuselage diagram in place. If you need another look, just to confirm that everything looks right, here you are. But with that, we can start work on building. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing for the fuselage of the 737-900 here is starting off with layers one and two from the base 737-800 tutorial. Now, before we start here, it is important to, of course, place this in relative to the fuselage outline itself. So, in the original tutorial, layers 1 and 2 start with a wool top slab here, and this is going to want to start exactly two blocks behind the nose of the aircraft here. So you see, this is the very tip of the outline, and there's going to be a two block space here in between the front of that and the start of layers 1 and 2. So this should be starting right here. So, now it's time for me to give a more concise explanation as to how these stretch markers are going to work. So as I mentioned here, anything and I mean anything crossing over this outline here, or this marker rather, is going to get extended by an additional two blocks. So that means that if a row of, say, nine blocks is placed in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, you see that this is crossing over the uh, stretch marker here. So this will become a row of 11 blocks, adding on an additional two, like so. And anything that's done relative to any point on this here is going to again, get it extended and stretched based on the position of this marker. So, say I'll grab a button here, and just for the purposes of the demonstration here, I'll say that in the original tutorial, it was said to skip the first blocks here, the first two blocks, and on the third block place a stone button here, and then skip four blocks going back from this here, and then on the fifth block, place a stone button there. Well, that's past the marker now, so it's no longer on the fifth block, this is going to get moved back by two blocks as well. So we have one and two right here. So everything going past this marker is going to just get stretched as if this layer here is expanded outwards. 
I hope this makes sense to you, and I will be giving you frequent overviews between layers here so that you can make sure that you have everything correct as well. And of course, you also have the fuselage outline to reference to make sure that everything is falling into place correctly. Anyways, with that, that's about all of my instruction out of the way here. So I'm gonna clear this all away, and we can get started on layers 1 and 2. So what you're gonna want to do now is just pull up the original 737-800 tutorial, Use the timestamps in the video description to skip ahead to layers 1 and 2, and you'll just be following through with that, stretching according to the diagram. So, get started on that, and I will see you once that's done. Alright, so once you have finished with layers 1 and 2, you should have something looking exactly like this. For the forward portion of the fuselage here, you should notice that the cargo door falls exactly one block forwards of the stretch line, so everything past this is just extended two blocks further backwards. This will land the wing box exactly on top of the wing box outline that we created here, as you can see here, and you'll notice that the rear edge coincides perfectly as well, and the aft fuselage section here should be extended a further two blocks back. So this layer here is the most crucial layer to get correct when stretching like this. This, this is what will be used as a base point building upwards. From here on out you can use everything previously as a reference to make sure that everything coincides proportionally and everything is building up correctly. Make sure that you remember it as well when building the forward portion of the fuselage here, when building the slab layer from the back forwards, that this will also get extended by two. Even though it's not coming from the front backwards, it still does cross over the stretch line here, and so it will get extended forwards by an additional two blocks to coincide there correctly. So once you have layers one and two in place here, it's pretty much smooth sailing from here on out with the stretch process. It'll be much easier now that we have this base set up for ourselves. The last thing that we're going to be doing here for this layer is actually fixing something very quickly here. So we're going to be coming down to the aft wing box, and where we have this uh, first uh, antenna here on the forward left side, this lever right here, we're going to be grabbing this and moving it one block back right here. Make sure it's flipped facing backwards. So this should be on the last block of these two exposed here, rather than the first one. And this is actually a mistake from the uh, 800 tutorial that I actually made uh, myself months ago when making that tutorial. And it was never supposed to be that way, and I just simply never noticed that I had made that mistake. So it is indeed supposed to be this way. As well, if you have built any of the uh, 800s from that tutorial, feel free to apply this fix as well. My apologies for that, but I just figured that I should mention it here to make sure that everything is remedied correctly. So now that we have the first layer in place, we're next going to be moving on to a set of two layers. This is going to be layers 3 and 4. And we'll just be meeting back here to double check once those are both done. So just continue building, and of course, stretching according to the diagram through layer 4. And I will meet you once that's done. Alright, so once you've finished through layer 4, you should be left with something looking just like this. So again, here's a glance around just to make sure that everything is lining up correctly. Make sure that the layering is stacking up on the aft fuselage as well. Here's a glance if you need. But uh, yeah, we've got the aft cargo door going in here and all of the detailing should be looking just like this. So, now that we have these two layers done here, now is another perfect time to add in another fix. So, this will be at the tail strike wheel here, where we have this upside down quartz stair and the button right here. This is nothing major by any means, but uh, we're just going to take this button and um, reorient it. So, in the original tutorial, I had you place it uh, perpendicular to the aircraft. So, according to our own design here, it's actually supposed to be parallel with it. So we're going to be placing a temporary block under here, stone button, and pasting it in like so. So it should be facing lengthwise down the aircraft, just a design looking like this. Now, again, as I said, this is absolutely nothing major and it really doesn't matter, but this is another thing that I noticed as I was uh, going over the tutorial here. This was a mistake I made in the 800 tutorial where I failed to orient that correctly, so I just figured that I would let you know how it's supposed to be, and we can fix it here for the 900 ourselves. So again, my apologies for that, but uh, everything should be perfect with that. So once we have that all done now, we're going to be moving on to layer 5. I'm going to be having you do this one individually and then checking back afterwards just to make sure that all of the window placements are lining up correctly, but just go ahead and build layer 5, stretching according to the diagram, and I will catch you once that's done. Alright, so with layer 5 in place here, this is one of our more complicated layers of course since it does have all of the windows, and it also has a bit of asymmetry just due to how the 737's windows are placed, as you noticed in the tutorial. So I just figured this was a more critical layer to tackle individually. So again, 
as you saw in the original tutorial, the 737-800 does have this interesting window asymmetry where there are two windows blocked on the left side here at the uh, in line with the engines, and on the right side it's just a single window that's blocked right here. And this window asymmetry does carry through to the 900, so it should look just like this. There's nothing spe else special that's going on here. So this uh, layer of windows that's forwards of this just gets stretched by an additional two before the um, uh, window asymmetry there. You should notice, of course, that the overwings fall on top of the overwings from the previous layer, and everything should be looking just like this. So, with layer 5 done now, we're next going to be moving on to the last two layers of the fuselage. This will be layers 6 through 7. Now, the important thing to mention here, and you'll probably want to write this down somewhere as well just to reference, is that on the uh, 800 tutorial, I show you how to put the SACOM antenna in on the uh, top of the fuselage here, as we're putting in the fuselage detailing. Now, our design here for the 900 does not include the SATCOM antenna, whereas it was a part of the 800 tutorial. There are some 900s that use this SATCOM configuration with a single SATCOM there behind the, or on the aft fuselage. I believe United uses this configuration, but there are very few, and those that do use the SATCOM usually have different configurations. So that's just not something that we have here in our rendition of the 900, for this tutorial at least so you will be leaving that out otherwise. And again, I just want to mention this quickly before I send you off to finish this. Please do make sure to pay attention to the stretch markers when putting in the fuselage details on top. It can get a bit tricky, since it's just building back on top on a flat surface with nothing else to reference, but just make sure that all of that is getting put in proportionally. I just wanted to make sure that that was clarified. Anyways, now that that's done, you'll just be going back to the 800 tutorial and building layers 6 through 7, again minus the SATCOM antenna, and stretching according to the fuselage diagram. So, I will catch you once we have built through layer 7. So, with layer 7 complete here, that is the fuselage of the 737-900 done. So, here's just one last quick glance around to make sure that everything is placed in correctly. You'll notice that that stretch marker there did fall behind the second button back in the fuselage detailing there. So, as opposed to being a single gap of 1, it's a gap of 3 here. And the same thing will happen with the uh, lever at the back here. This was extended back, or the gap was extended back, that is, by an additional two blocks, according to the stretch marker there. So just make sure that all of the fuselage detailing and layering is looking like it lines up perfectly. Anyways, with that, that is now the hardest part of this tutorial behind us. Now that we have the fuselage completed perfectly, it's just a matter of putting in all of the rest of the aircraft details. And for the most part, all of this will just be topping over from the 800 tutorial itself. So the next thing that we're going to be doing here is moving into the vertical stabilizer, the horizontal stabilizers, the wings, and the engines. None of this requires any modification at all from the base 800 tutorial, it just gets placed in uh, relative to the aircraft. So this will be very straightforward for the conversion process. And there's just one last thing to mention as well before we do build through that point. So there are actually two different variants of the exhaust nozzle for the CF-56 engines here. So there's the standard version, of course, and there's also the version that was introduced by the PIP, or Performance Improvement Package. And this is slightly different, and I do cover it in the 800 tutorial, of course, so it's just worth mentioning that any configuration you're building for the 900 here, with the PIP or whatever, will of course carry over and you'll just be using the uh, variant provided by the 800 tutorial for that. So with that bit of instruction now, it's just a matter of getting back to building. So build on through the engines, and I will catch you once all of that is done. Alright, so with that all done now, first of all, welcome back to the tutorial. After that long building process, we should now be completed through the wings and engines of the 737 here. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the tutorial, our design for the winglets has changed since the 800 tutorial came out. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is showing you how to build those. If you're building an older aircraft here and aren't going to be including the winglets at all, and just leaving them uninstalled, as seen here, then you can skip ahead past the winglet section here and jump ahead to the interior, and a timestamp for that will be in the video description below. Otherwise, to get started on the winglet section here, again, as I mentioned, we have two different variants. We have the normal blended winglets and the newer split scimitar winglets. The split scimitars are an extension upon the blended winglets, so no matter which of the two variants you'll be building, we'll be first starting off with the blended winglets either way. So with that, let's get going on the winglets. Alright, so for the blended winglets, we'll be starting right at the very tip of the wing, where we have this uh, polished granite slab here and the smooth stone slab for the beacon light at the tip of the wing. We're going to be knocking out this layer entirely right here. Then where we have this row of two of the cobblestone for the slab detailing in from this here, we're going to be knocking out that outermost cobblestone slab and replacing it with a polished granite slab right here for the red beacon light on the left side of the aircraft. 
since the winglet does replace the wingtip structure here, the beacon light does shift slightly inwards, so that's what that's doing there. Now going back from this here, you'll see we have these two smooth stone half slabs. We'll be replacing these with wool half slabs, and then out from this here we'll be placing a row of two wool top slabs out to the side just like this. On top of the rearmost one right here we have a wool full block with a birch trapdoor closed against its front face, and a dead brain twirl fan on the rear face of this full block right here. Now in the Air Team pack, the Dead Brain Twirl Fan is a uh, wool vertical slab model, as you can see here. In default, you can try using upside down stairs to round off the shaping, but it really isn't a perfect solution because this is much bulkier than it should be. So if you do have access to the Air Team pack, then I do recommend, of course, using the vertical slabs for this. So now that we have this, the next thing that we're going to be doing is placing a wool block out at an angle from that vertical slab right there, with a vertical slab on its face. Now going back from this full block here, we're going to be placing a temporary block back at an angle, like so, with a vertical slab on its forward face, and a second one going back right here. We're going to select this rearmost one with the replace tool, that's slash REPL0 with world edit, select this and paste over, like so. And this will give a smooth winglet shape looking just like this. Now if you do have sharper eyes, you may recognize this winglet shape from our previous 757 tutorial. And that's because the 737 and 757 actually share the same winglet, so when we redesigned our 757 family and uh, redesigned the winglet for it, we did apply that to the 737 family, which is why the old winglet from the 800 tutorial here with the stair design, which is a bit chunkier as you can see, is now no longer in use. So this is the design we now use for this family. Anyways, with that all done now, we can just do the same thing on the right side of the aircraft. So, shave off that outer layer of the wingtip right there, where we have these two cobblestone slabs. We place the first one with a prismarine brick slab for the green navlate on the right side of the aircraft, then knock out these two smooth stone slabs and replace them with wool. Two wool top slabs out at an angle right here, with a wool block on the rearmost one right there. Birch trapdoor closed against the front and a vertical slab going back. Wool block out at an angle from that vertical slab there, with a vertical slab on its forward face right here. Temporary block going back at an angle from that full block right there. Vertical slab on its forward face. On its rear face, select and paste over. And that will finish off the winglet light so. Alright, so with the blended winglets done now, the next thing that we can move on to is the split scimitar winglets. Now if you are not using this extension of the winglets and are only using the normal winglets, then you can skip ahead past the split scimitars here via the timestamps in the description below to the interior. Otherwise, to get started on the split scimitar winglets here, this is pretty straightforward. The first thing that we're going to be doing is coming down to these very first two wool slabs that we placed in the winglets right here. Underneath these two half slabs, we have two wool top slabs, like so. From the rearmost top slab right here, we're going to be placing a half slab out to the side, with a birch trapdoor behind it, and a top slab underneath that trapdoor right there. This will give the split portion of the split scimitar. So for the scimitar itself, which is an extension on the top of the winglet right here, we're going to grab a birch trapdoor and drop this on top of the rearmost vertical slab right there. It's just a small hook that sticks backwards right there to uh, extend the winglet a little bit more. Anyways, that is about it for the split scimitars here. So we're just going to be doing the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here. It's a very simple process. So underneath these two wool half slabs here, two wool top slabs, wool half slab out to the side right there, with a birch trapdoor behind it and a wool top slab. Then on top of the vertical slab right here, the rearmost one, we're going to have a birch trapdoor right there to finish off the scimitar portion. And that is everything for the split scimitar winglets. So now that we have the winglets covered, that is everything for the exterior of the in-flight aircraft. So the next thing that we're going to be doing here is moving on to the interior. Now because so much of the interior is shared between the 800 and the 900, I'm going to be having you build most of it from the 800 tutorial before we finish off the rest to match the 900 here. So what I'm going to have you do is, uh, of course, referencing the base 800 tutorial, you're going to be completing through the first class section, completing the first class. So that'll be building the flight deck, the forward galleys, the cabin, and the first class seating. This is because we'll be covering the autonomy class section separately for the 900, since it is the part that does get stretched for the interior. So just complete the interior through the first class section, and I will meet you back once that's done. Alright, so with all that interior work done now, we should have something looking like this with the flight deck, and the first class section in here complete, as well as being built back with the uh, bulkheads here and the quartz top slabs going all the way through for the uh, overhead bins here. 
And this is exactly where we should be to be starting with the new section for the 900 here. Now before we get onto all that here, there is one thing I would like to quickly add in before we continue. That is to come back up here to the forward doors, and we're going to be tweaking this design a little bit here. So, where we have these, this row of three of the uh, quartz blocks here, or the column of three rather, we're going to be taking quartz stairs here, we're going to knock out this top block of the full blocks right there, and replace it with an upside down quartz stair facing in towards the center right here. That'll just help to curve off the door a bit more realistically. And then on the center block here of those three, we're going to place a stone button towards the inside face right there, just for the handle to make it a little bit more detailed and less flat. And we'll be doing the same thing on the right side here. So, quartz upside down stair there, and a stone button coming off that full block. Again, this is where a bit of the design has changed since the 800 tutorial came out. So this is part of the design, of course it isn't anything unique to the 900. So, if you like, you can apply this to the 800 as well, this little fix here. But yeah, just the various little uh, improvements over time upon the design. Anyways, I just figured that I should probably cover that just for good measure. But now what we're going to be doing is moving on to the economy class seating. So for this, we'll be switching out to the prismarine material here, and grabbing the diorite slabs, of course, for the floor. So behind both of these bulkheads right here, we're going to have a single diorite slab of space. And then behind this right here, we're going to have a prismarine full block, and then a prismarine upside down stair facing forwards. Now, as I believe I mentioned in the 800 tutorial at the start of the interior, this is of course our default interior for the 800. It does vary by color and configuration depending on the aircraft, but this is what we've got going on here. And for our default interiors on aircraft such as this, we do like to use prismarine for blue seat colors for the uh, economy class seating here. And if you are in default and don't have access to this nice deep navy blue color here, you can just substitute um, stone brick for a gray uh, seat color all the way through but this is what we're using here in the Aero Team pack. So, now that we have that seat design in place there, we're going to be doing the same thing on the right side. So, full block there, and upside down stair facing forwards. And this is going to repeat back for a total of 16 seats on both sides. So we have one here already. This is going to be... Wow, I've messed that up completely. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, right there. And same thing on the right side, so we have one here already. This will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. There we go. Then we'll just place in all of the upside down stairs here going back on top of all of these full blocks here. Just like this. Bit of a pain to place them against the uh, uh, stairs on the side, but here we go. Almost there. Perfect. There we go. So that is all of the economy class seating there. And we're just going to move on to the aft galleys here quickly. It's pretty much the same as the 800, of course, as always, but I'm just going to do it here on camera in this tutorial just to save you having to go back and skip around to find it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing here is placing a diorite half slab going back from the uh, prismarine full plots right there just to seal off the last bit of that floor. Next, going back here, where you, you see we have this row of two of the wolf full blots right there, we're going to grab uh, smooth stone full blots. On the left side here, on top of this row of two, we're going to have a 2x2 two two square of the smooth stone blocks right here. On the right side, what we're going to have is another seat going back. So on top of the first wool block right here, we have an upside down prismarine stair right there. And with this one, we can't replace that block there with the prismarine full block because it does show out to the exterior of the aircraft. So that does need to be a full block. But it'll just extend for one seat past on the right side here. That's behind this right here, on top of that last exposed wall block, we have a row of two of the smooth stone going up, just like this. Next, after this here, we're going to be placing in the doors for the lavatories here. So, grab the birch doors here. What we're going to first do is just turn these direct half slabs there into full blocks, in from those um, uh, smooth stone blocks right there. On the rearmost full block, we're going to have a birch door against the right side of the aircraft, right there, just against that bit of the lavatory. And on the forwardmost block, it's going to go against the left side, for the door being right in there. Next, we're going to grab a stick, or any old tool, slash REPL0 to switch this over to the replace tool, and then select the 
direct slabs here and paste it over both of those full blocks just to get those uh, doors hovering. So it's kind of the same trick as we did up at the front there in the 800 tutorial for the uh, flight deck and the other lavatories up there. So now that we have the aft lavatories in place, it's just a matter of putting in the aft galleys here. So we're going to take this diorite full block right here, we're going to replace it with a diorite half slab, just shave it down a block right there. Next on top of this here we have a smooth stone full block with a acacia button on its front face right there. That'll seal off right in there. Now in front of this here, you see where we have that wool full block, we're just going to replace that with a wool half slab right in there, just to fill in that last bit of the floor. Then out to either side here, where we have the uh, aft doors, we're going to be taking the quartz stairs again, replacing this uh, quartz top slab right here with an upside down quartz stair facing in towards the center of the aircraft, just to round it off a bit better. Then we'll grab levers and place this going in towards the center from both of those full blocks right there for the handles, and that'll finish off the detailing. And with that, that is everything for the interior of the 737-900. So with that, that is everything for the in-flight 737-900. Now if you are building this on the ground, as I am here, the next thing that you'll be wanting to do is move on to the landing gear. And that can be found in the base 737-800 tutorial. And again, as with everything, you'll be able to find a timestamp to that in its respective video description. Now additionally as well here, of course, we do have the conversion for the 737-900ER, which we'll be moving on to next here. If this is what you'll be ultimately converting this aircraft into, we'll be next covering that now. If you aren't building this though, and you are just keeping it as an older 737-900, then that's it, you are done with this tutorial, and you can skip right on ahead to the end of the video. Congratulations! Otherwise, let's get going on the 900ER conversion. Alright, so to convert this aircraft into the Boeing 737-900ER, as I mentioned, its main feature is of course the extended range with the uh, larger fuel tank capacity and all that, but of course that's not really something that can be represented in Minecraft at all. So the most prominent feature here for us is going to be the installation of the aft exit door. So for this we'll be coming to the rear of the aircraft, where we have the aft door right here. We'll be counting forwards from this to place this in. Forwards from this you'll see we have this row of two of the wool blocks here, and then after this we have the wool stairs facing forwards. We're going to count for a total of six of these. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now after this here, on the seventh block, we're going to be replacing this wool stair right there with a wool full block. Then forwards from this here, we're going to be knocking out that wool stair right there, and the full block below it. Now also for good measure, before we get to this, uh, the exterior portion at least, we're just going to knock out that stair just so that we have a reference for ourselves later, as we'll be modifying the interior after this of course. So what we're going to be doing here is placing a quartz full block on the bottom row right there, and then a quartz stair facing backwards, like so. Actually, I want to make sure that I use the quartz full block for this and not the double slab layer, just because we don't want that uh, um, a slab line showing through the center right there. But yeah, that should give us something looking just like this. And to double check the placement of the door, going forwards from this, we, have, we should have a total of 12 of the wool stairs until we hit the overwing exits. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Perfect. The door is aligned perfectly. So we'll just be doing the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here. So counting forwards from the aft exit door, we have two wool full blocks there. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 of the wool stairs. Knock out the 7th, and we'll be placing a, uh, actually a wool full block in that space there. Then knocking out the stair going forwards from that, we have a quartz stair facing backwards, and a block of quartz below it, just like this. That'll be everything for the aft exit door there on the exterior of the fuselage. So we'll just hop inside now, and continue with the interior. So we'll be starting right inside of both of the uh, aft emergency exits here, and you'll see we have that gap where we knocked out the seat right there. So going back from this here, we're just going to be knocking out all of this right here, along the outsides of course, we can just leave the uh, center row of diorite slabs intact, but just clear out some space looking just like this. Next, going back from the seats right here, we'll be switching over to our seat materials again. Back from this diorite half slab right here, we're going to be placing a second going back, just like this, for the uh, gap in the seating for the aft emergency exit there. Now going back from this, we're going to have a uh, prismarine full block right there on both sides, and then the upside down prismarine stair facing forwards to start off the seats. This will go back for a total of four seats on both sides right here. So we have one here already, two, three, and four. And this should land right up against the aft uh, uh, lavatories right here. 
So one, two, three, and four, like so. And we'll just be placing all of the upside down stairs on top, just like this. So now that we have the seats shifted accordingly, the last thing that we're gonna do is just come to the uh, lavatories on the right side here, where we have that wool full block, where the seat used to be right there before it was shifted over. We're just gonna be shaving that down to a wool half slab right there, just to preserve the uh, layer of the floor right here in the cabin. So, once that's done, that is everything for the conversion of the Boeing 737-900ER, and we are done with this tutorial. So, congratulations on completing the Boeing 737-900. Thank you so much for choosing the narrow team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you're using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the Aero team for these designs. You cannot use our builds without giving us due credit. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. Tag us on Twitter, at AeroTeamMC, or share it with us on our Discord server. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the AeroTeam channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Anyways, that is just about it. So, Thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.